Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com. I want to talk to you today about Apple's Let's Talk iPhone event. Basically, I want to just recap some of the rumors and essentially talk about my thoughts on the next iPhone incarnation. So, one of the biggest rumors coming into this last couple weeks has been the fact that there are expected to be two different iPhone models, an iPhone 5, which would be the new model, and iPhone 4S, that would be the replacement to the low $99 model that we have with the iPhone 3GS now. I kind of don't think that that's what's going to happen here. I think that the next incarnation, the new hardware, is either going to be called the 5 or the 4S, and I'm starting to think that that's going to be the 4S now. And then I think that the lower end model is just going to be a new iPhone 4 at 8 gigabytes, and again, that's going to be at that lower price point, either $100 or it could be free on contract, depending, there's some speculation either way. So regardless of what they call it, the next iPhone, the iPhone 5 or the 4S, uh, is basically, we know that there's going to be a couple improvements. A5 dual-core CPU, the same that's in the iPad 2. Not only will that improve general performance significantly, being dual-core, but the graphics processor in that A5 chip is significantly improved as well. So performance across the board for the iPhone 5 would be significantly improved. Also, unlike the iPad 2, which has 512 megabytes of RAM, it's looking like there's going to be one gigabyte of RAM inside this next iPhone. And we'll get to why that's important as one of the software features coming up shortly. There's also going to be an 8 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p video recording. That's going to be one of the staples of, of their marketing campaign is going to be the quality photos and videos that you can capture on this. The iPhone 3GS uh, added video recording. The iPhone 4 added HD 720p video recording. This one's going to be full 1080p. And it's also going to have a backlit sensor for improved performance in low light situations, which is actually a very cool feature and is one that really a lot of a lot of mobile phones have problems with low light because of the small sensor size, and, and just a backlit sensor will improve the amount of light that can get in there. Uh, one thing that we've always had was two storage models. Uh, right now we have 16 and 32. At first I thought it was just going to be finally bumped up to 3264 because I think that that's something that's just very important that Apple you know, slowly starts to move that up, especially because storage is not upgradable on current iPhones and probably won't in this one. Uh, but now, right before recording this video, it seems that there could be three models, 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte options, similar to the way the iPad 2 has it. So that's just something to keep in mind. I don't really know how they would do pricing, though, because they've always had a $200 and a $300 model since the iPhone 3G launch with their discounted prices over the original iPhone, so I don't know what the price points would be if there were three models, so I think it's still going to be two, and I'm just hoping that it's going to be a 32 gigabyte model and a 64 gigabyte model at the same 199 and 299 price points. In terms of the chips that are inside, dual GSM and CDMA chips for both AT&T and Verizon wireless bands, the current Verizon wireless iPhone 4 actually has a GSM CDMA chip inside of it and could run on both networks, but it only has Verizon wireless bands activated. So right now, Apple has an, a, a GSM version and a CDMA version. That's kind of inefficient. That's not Apple's way of doing it. So this next one is definitely going to have uh, a chip set that can work with GSM and CDMA. And you know what? Sprint's going to get the iPhone. I really have a good feeling about this. There's been a lot of rumors, speculation in the making. I kind of thought that when Verizon launched it, Sprint wouldn't be too far behind, but obviously they're waiting. So I would not be surprised if tomorrow Sprint gets the iPhone as well. Uh, however, there won't be LTE in these devices. First of all, LTE standards aren't completely rolled out. There's no real standard for it at this point. Verizon Wireless has a pretty good footprint. AT&T doesn't really have anything. And Sprint, at this point, uses WiMAX, although there's, they're definitely going to be switching over to LTE in the future. So in the United States and across the world, that sort of uh, transfers, there really is not going to be any sort of... LTE in this. Now there will be 4G though, quote unquote 4G. HSPA Plus will probably be built into this device. So right now the iPhone 4 has a 7.2 megabit per second uh, chip inside of it for downstream. Looking like it's going to be 21 megabits per second in this next iPhone. So it will have 4G HSPA Plus. That'll actually be a big selling point for AT&T because they'll be able to advertise this as a 4G model for them whereas Verizon and Sprint can't. So it definitely makes sense for everyone. Um, this is going to be looking like a October 14th launch, um, so that's just going to be a couple, like a week or two away after we hear about all, everything in the announcements tomorrow on the 4th. Now, what's interesting is this broke the yearly product refresh cycle for the device. It's always been in the summer. The iPhone, f the original iPhone launched in, in the, I forget when it launched, but the iPhone 3G launched in, I believe, June or July. Same thing with the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4. So I'd be very, very surprised if this wasn't a big update. Now, we're going to talk about um, 
<coughs> some more hardware features in a second, but let me just tell you what it looks like is going to be the biggest feature of this. It's looking like it's going to be another software feature in iOS 5 that's exclusive to the new hardware because it requires the extra RAM to run in the background. What is that? That's going to be called, codenamed Assistant, which is full voice commands. Basically, right now, you can double tap and get some voice control, double tap the home button and get some voice control options. That launched the iPhone 3G, but it was so limited, the only commands that were specifically programmed in would work. What this is, is it's kind of, the engine that's running it understands language and will be able to comprehend what you're saying. So whatever you can think of. So you can double click and say make appointments, send text messages, initiate reminders, or get GPS directions, all with your voice. And what's cool is it'll actually ask you questions in return. So if you say send text to Michael, and then you say Michael is the coolest, check out his blog at michaelsherlock.com, then the assistant would read it back to you to ensure that everything was accurate. And if it wasn't, you could go in and either say it again or just quickly type in the, the adjustments, which is pretty cool. Another feature that's looking like it's going to be an assistant is Find My Friends. So you can locate your iOS device friends around you. So if you, of course, there'll be privacy settings for it, but if I had this enabled on my phone, my friends that have me as a contact on I, in, in their iPhones or iPads or iPod Touches, or really just iPhones at this point, although this feature will eventually leak out into the other product lines as well, but if they had an iPhone 5, I had an iPhone 5, they could see, oh, I'm at the dining hall on campus, and they could just meet up with me, and it would be very, very easy. Now, another cool feature in Assistant, it, it just keeps getting better, guys, is Wolfram Alpha integration. So essentially what that means is the Assistant architecture will be able to understand your language, and Wolfram Alpha will be able to answer almost any question you can possibly have. So you can just basically talk and speak any question, any command, and your iPhone will be able to take care of it for you. Very, very cool. Uh, another feature, nuanced speech-to-text for text fields like you know messaging, for instance. Um, so you could go ahead and not only just search for anything, but if you wanted to go in and just be in a messaging app or be in the Google search, and you could just easily, instead of having to go back to the assistant and, and say, Google search Michael Sherlock, you could be already in the browser and just say Michael Sherlock. It would be in that Google search. It would be in that Google search field, and you could go ahead and do that. So assistant is a very cool feature, especially with that Wolfram Alpha integration. I think it could definitely be revolutionary. <coughs> and if... If Apple, you know, if the rumors are true and Apple really has done an extremely good job with the back end of this and you can say almost any command and it'll understand it, this will definitely be a really nice feature to have. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with the iPhone is the cosmetic changes. That's kind of what everybody's been think talking about. You know, a lot of people don't really care that much about the dual core processor. That doesn't really apply to them. Even some people aren't too sold on the assistant feature yet. They just want something that looks different because they've been waiting and they just want to see. Well, if, the, if we say the iPhone 5 is that new design and the iPhone 4S is that improved design, at a minimum, we'll have that iPhone 4 design with an improved antenna. Antenna gate was definitely a big deal. Apple had to go out and make a little announcement at their home campus that, okay, guys, this really isn't a problem, but we'll give you bumpers anyway. So clearly it was a little bit of an issue. So if the iPhone 4S is the same design, it'll definitely have improved antenna performance. And you know what? Even if it's sort of similar to this design with the 4S, I don't think that it's going to be exactly the same. I wouldn't be surprised if it had a screen that was completely towards the edges, right? That would give you a little bit more screen size on each side, perhaps a 3.7-inch display. There's also rumors that, hey, maybe the back could go aluminum. That would be pretty cool. And that would all still fit under you know, a very similar design to the current iPhone 4. That's what I think is more likely. I think... But there are still a lot of speculations about the iPhone 5, completely new. That's, that is still a possibility, although the latest rumors and the latest internal uh, you know, inventory leaks and all that have been saying iPhone 4S. There's still a lot of rumors about iPhone 5 with a completely new design, um, with an aluminum unibody design, 3.7-inch or 4-inch display with maybe tapered edges. That, there's been a lot of mock-ups of that device, and it does look pretty cool. I think that the one piece of evidence that would make sense for that, though, is the fact that AntennaGate really turned Apple off to the current iPhone design. That's why even the 4S, if it's stuck with something sort of like this, would be a little bit different. It would definitely inc include improved antenna performance, just because it gave Apple so many headaches. And you know what? I know that they probably spent the time researching it in their in their inside of their company, and I think the fact that the iPhone 4 was leaked and somebody had a pre-build of it kind of diverted their attention away from final testing, but I think that that really turned Apple off to it, so there's definitely a possibility for the iPhone 5, but like I said, an iPhone 4 design with improved antenna performance and perhaps a edge-to-edge, -edge, you know, edge-to-edge screen, that's definitely more likely in my opinion. 
Now the last thing, this is this at this time, this is when Apple usually does their iPod events, uh, you know, at this time in the year. So nothing revolutionary. It looks like the iPod Touch may come in white, but it doesn't look like it's going to have any really cool new features. Uh, the same thing with the other iPods in the lineup. There's rumors that the Shuffle and the Classic could be discontinued. I kind of doubt that both of them would be discontinued. I know that iPod sales have been definitely going down, but there's still definitely a niche for, you know, not internet-connected devices that Shuffle is at a low price. You just put on some music, just some mute workout music, let's say. And you don't have to worry about choosing a song, and the Classic is just a monster in terms of storing so much music on the go. So I don't think they'll be completely, you know, discontinued, but... I think Apple is starting to shift away from having the an iPod event every year that's a big focus and a big feature for them. So guys, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. I hope you like my feedback. Of course, I'll come back to you tomorrow and give you a full heads up and review and of course my opinions on the official announcements that Apple releases. I do want to apologize though for the coughing in my voice. I'm pretty sick right now. I'm hoping that'll be better tomorrow so my voice isn't as raspy for you, but hopefully uh, this video will suffice. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. As always guys, thanks for watching and have a nice day.